We all love heroes, whether that is the Avengers or the sporting heroes that do our team and our country proud, or our Olympic heroes who have done so much to lift our spirits during these dark days of isolation, working from home, remote learning, and so many of our favorite places closed and shut down, like this church. Saints are church heroes. They show us how to live as Catholic Christians, how to develop a relationship with God, and how to respond to God's call. Mary McKillop is one such church hero. On the 15th of January, 1842, Mary McKillop was born of Scottish parents, Alexander McKillop and Flora MacDonald in the inner city Melbourne suburb of Fitzroy near Victoria. Mary was the eldest of eight children and was well educated by her father. He wasn't great with business, and so the family was often without a home of their own, depending on friends and relatives for places to stay. They were frequently separated from one another. From the age of 16, Mary earned her living and greatly supported her family as a governess, a clerk and a teacher at the Portland School in Western Victoria. While acting as governess to her uncle's children at Panola in South Australia, Mary met Father Julian Tennyson Woods, who, with a parish of 56,000 square kilometres, needed help in the religious education of children in the outback. At the time, Mary's family depended on her income, so she was not free to follow her dream. However, in 1866, greatly inspired and encouraged by Father Woods, now the Director of Catholic Education in Adelaide, Mary opened the first St. Joseph's School in a disused stable in Panola. Young women came to join Mary, which helped to create the congregation of the Sisters of St. Joseph. She took the name Mary of the Cross. In 1867, Mary was asked by Bishop Scheel to come to Adelaide to start a school. From there, the sisters spread in groups to small outback settlements, villages, towns and large cities around Australia and New Zealand. Mary and these early sisters had a profound influence on the forming of Catholic education as we have come to know and experience it today. She also opened orphanages, providences to care for the homeless and destitute, both young and old and refuges for ex-prisoners and ex-courtesans who wished to make a fresh start in life. Throughout her life, Mary met with opposition from people outside the church and even from some of those within it. Mary was excommunicated from the church in September 1871. She and 47 other sisters were expelled from the Sisters of St. Joseph and were forced to find accommodation and employment wherever they could. During this time, Mary dressed in normal street clothes She had been ordered not to communicate with any of the sisters. She was cut off from all support. In the most difficult of times, she consistently refused to attack those who wrongly accused her and undermined her work, but continued in the way she believed God was calling her and was always ready to forgive those who had wronged her. Throughout her life, Mary suffered ill health. She died on the 8th of August in 1909 in the convent in Mount Street in North Sydney. This is where we can pray around her tomb. The congregation now numbers about 1,200 sisters, working mainly in Australia and New Zealand, but also scattered right around the world. The brown joeys may be seen standing with and in sharing with the poor and the needy in big city schools, on dusty bush tracks, in busy hospitals, in caravans, caring for and working with the little ones of God, the homeless, new migrants, indigenous communities, the lonely and the unwanted. In their commitment to reverence the human dignity of others and to change unjust structures, the sisters and the many others who share the spirit of Mary McKillop continue the work that she began. The process to have Mary declared a saint began in the 1920s. She was beatified in Sydney in January 1995 by Pope John Paul II. Pope Benedict XVI prayed at her tomb in 2008 during his visit to Sydney for World Youth Day and in 2009 approved the church's recognition of a second miracle attributed to her intercession. She was canonized on the 17th of October, 2010, during a ceremony in St. Peter's Square in Rome. She is the first Australian to be recognized by our church as a saint. Some of Mary's sayings, never see a need without doing something about it. Believe in the whisperings of God to your own heart. Let us love and praise God in all. And may the spirit of unity and love reign 
amongst us. Let no obstacle deter us from proceeding with courage. Seek first the poorest, most neglected parts of God's vineyard. Like many other great heroes in our country, Mary takes her place and invites us and inspires us to do the same, to join in her mission, to see those needs around us, and inspired by her example, to step up and to pray and to offer ourselves as a living witness, to be a hero for those around us, to call others into the life and the wonder of God's love for us.